So we're going to jump right into our second video um, in a series of videos for auxiliary views. Um, this one is going to be CAD exercise 5.3, the shaft support. Uh, I just want to clarify that I am skipping the angle bracket in, uh, for a AutoCAD demo. Um, I feel like the, the previous video that I did um, from the sketching assignment and then doing that in AutoCAD was good preparation for that. So I want to leave the angle bracket um, to you to kind of uh, work out the details uh, for yourself in that. But uh, there are some important concepts that I want to discuss with uh, the shaft support. And I'm also going to be doing in a, in a third and final video in this series, um, a, a video of the uh, connecting bar. Okay, uh, so without further ado, let's uh, jump into the shaft support. So I have the assignment up, up in front of you and you can see what you're, what you're asked to do is to create a front and top view um, and also a partial auxiliary view. Okay, uh, we are omitting the fillets and rounds on this. So all the edges will have sharp uh, 90 degree corners. Um, of course, we're going to start with the MVCC mechanical inch template. This is an inch drawing. So we are going to start with that. Um, and I do want to point out that um, the the drawing setup for this is shown in the book on, on with the with the figure for the shaft support figure 748 right in the top right hand corner of that figure is shown a little um, drawing setup which uh, which will get us going you know we don't have to stick with the um, with the 1.5 inch separation between the two views um, but at least we can understand or you can understand how the drawing is going to be set up so so let's get started so here we are let's start with the mechanical inch template and um, I think the easiest way to get started with this would be the top view because it's um, pretty straightforward. Uh, so here I'm going to draw a circle and uh, the radius on the outside is one inch. So I'm going to draw a circle with a radius of one. Um, and then I'm going to copy this circle and I'm going to copy it. And I, you know, I want you to notice I'm copying it directly across. I'm using the um, the relative copy, that is to say, I'm just moving the objects that I've selected, in this case, the circle, relative to some arbitrary point that I picked right here. Um, and then I'm going to use direct distance entry. So basically, I'm moving the object and notice that I, I have that green dotted line so that I know I'm moving it at uh, a horizontal or zero degrees. I'm going to move it to the right and I'm going to type in the distance that I want to move from center to center is 3.5. So I can go like that. All right. Now I can zoom in on that and I want to, you know, frame this in now. And so I have object snap quadrant on, right, which is what these are. That's a quadrant. So if you, if you want to grab those points, then turn on quadrant. Sometimes the other object snaps will work you know, um, uh, perpendicular or uh, it kind of depends on the geometry, but you know, th that's quadrant will get you exactly there. Um, now I'm going to trim out all that stuff and, and we have the basic outline right there. Now I can add in more detail. And, and one of the, the first things that I want to talk to you about is the, um, is the dimension, understanding the dimension for the series of holes that we have to draw. So here on the left hand side and here on the right hand side are a series of holes. Now just just so that you can you know see what I'm talking about, I'm going to um, I'm going to type in uh, what these dimensions are. Um, so bear with me for a second. Actually I'm going to pause it and then start it again. Okay, so what I've done up here is I put the dimension that we're going to use or that is used to describe the series of holes uh, that we have to construct over here. And I want to make sure we you understand how to read this and what this means. Later on, when we uh, dimension the objects, you'll 
you know, have to understand it again and, um, and actually recreate this dimension right here that I have. Um, but we'll save that for later. So what this, what this means is this is basically the manufacturing instructions for creating these two holes. Okay. So the two X means that there's two holes. There's one on the left right here and one on the right. Okay. Um, the diameter 531 is the through hole diameter. That is the small hole that goes through the object. Okay. Through the object from top to bottom. Then underneath that is a, what, um, what is the counter bore hole dimension. Now a counter bore or a spot face. And in, in fact, this one is, uh, a, a, actually a spot face, but they have the same symbology. Um, the counter bore or spot face hole is a larger diameter hole that is going to be drilled to a certain depth, not through the object, but a certain depth. And in this case, the depth of the counter bore is 0 0.04 inches. Okay. So, um, diameter 531 is the small hole. Diameter 94 is the larger counter bore diameter. And then that counter bore or spot face is a depth of 0 0.04 inches. So how do we draw that in this view? Well, we draw it just like this. Okay. So we go, let's go to circle center diameter and I want to use the center point here and I'm going to draw a diameter of 0.531, right? Um, then I'm going to go back to center diameter and put another center concentric with that one with a diameter of 0.94, all right? That's it. That's the top view, okay? Of course, we can't see the depth in the top view because we can only see it in the front view or side views, right? Not in this view. So now I could copy this again the same way as I did before, or maybe I can just go from center point. So this is a slightly different way. This is point to point. Remember the last time that I copied, it was a relative copy from some arbitrary point um, and then some distance and some angle, and in that case, zero degrees. Um, this one, I'm just gonna go center to center copy, okay? And then we hit escape. And then there we go. Now I'll leave this up here right now. Um, uh, just so I can, when I draw the front view, I can, uh, you know, reference this again. Um, but all right, so let's finish this up. Now the, um, the, the top part, the kind of half circle thingy, um, it's, uh, it starts, we can start 2.2 inches from here. So so here's, I'm going to draw a line. So this is going to be kind of a reference line. I'm going to draw a line from there to there, right? And I'm going to offset that, right? Offset 2.2. Now I've said this before. Uh, I've said it again. I'll say it again. Um, there's a, a number of different ways to draw all, all these drawings. So I'm just showing you one way. You may, you know, sneer at this and find a better way to draw it. That's fine. All right. Um, the the object on the top is angled at 45 degrees and the length is uh well it's a radius of one so the length is two so i can go like this i can draw a line from this corner at 45 degrees right now i have my polar tracking set at 45 degrees so i can draw it at 45 degrees a distance of two right and then it's going to be 90 degrees to that for the for the thickness, which is 0.8, so I can go 0.8, right? And then I can come back down here and, of course, go 2, and then I can close, right? So that point was just to get me located. Uh, and there's my top view. Um, now, we got to add a hole here. Um, there's a hole in the top. I, I'm not going to put the center marks, excuse me, I'm not going to put the, well, the center marks, I'm also not going to put the hidden lines in yet, okay, um, but uh, there's a hole in the top, and the dimension for the hole in the top is a .125 IPS ASME B1.20.1, okay, so the only thing that really concerns us is the .125 IPS, that is a, um, a, a pipe thread specifications, and really the only part that we care about is the 0.125, that's the diameter. So I'm going to draw a circle. Uh, actually, I'm going to draw a line because I need a reference line. And here, you know, I need a midpoint here. So 
I'm going to, you know, I'm going to use uh, object snap override. So I'm just going to type in mid and override that and put on midpoint. And then I'll draw a line perpendicular there. And then I can draw a circle from the midpoint here. Oh, look, I don't have midpoint on again. Midpoint and then uh, 0.125 diameter. And there we go. Okay. Um, we can get rid of that. Um, all right. So now let's move on to the front view. Okay, so the front view, um, in, in the drawing setup figure, they kind of give you a little bit of a head start and they say, hey, you know what, separate those drawings 1.5 inches. And, you know, I'll start with that. that. That may be wholly inappropriate, but whatever, we'll start with it. We can always change it. So 1.5. And so far, so good. The height of this. So this represents the top of this feature, this vertical feature. And the height of that vertical feature is one, the radius is one, and then it's 0.9 from the base, so 1.9. So I can offset 1.9, offset that down, and then the thickness of the base is 0.6, offset 0.6. Okay. Um, now let's do a zoom extents and kind of, eh, that didn't work out so good. There we go. Um, and now let's get, let's finish this. So I'm going to draw a line from the quadrant. Now watch, I'm going to draw a line from, well, really, I'm going to, I'm going to, this is kind of unnecessarily um, complicated, but I want to show this technique or remind you of this technique so that you can work on this. I'm going to project this down. Now I'm not clicking yet. I haven't clicked and I'm just going to acquire that point. Now I'm going to move off of it and I'm going to acquire this point. And as I track across, it will remember that top point and boom, show me that intersection. Okay, so that's a real good time saving uh, trick. Now, as soon as I get that intersection, I don't have to move the mouse anymore, right? I just have to click, right? And then I can go up here, right? And let's do that again, acquire the point, acquire the point and track across, boom. And then we can go up. I really got too many object snaps on. Par parallel just popped up, and I certainly, eh, I certainly don't want parallel. Uh, let me turn that off. This I, I talked about this before. Having too many object snaps on is really a detriment. All right, so you really don't want too many. Why am I not tracking that across? There we go. Okay, so let's extend that. So that's just the extend command. Um, and now I can, I can finish the, the front view, right? So we have to draw full and complete top and front view. Now this is going to get a little bit tricky, right? And this is our first instance where we have to draw a foreshortened or what turns out to be an elliptical circle. Okay. So the representation of this vertical part in the front view the, the circular top is going to appear elliptical because it's foreshortened. All right, so let me just show you how I would frame this in. So first of all, I'm just going to frame in kind of the boundaries here. Okay. All right, there we go. That's the that's the vertical section without the curve, right? And I'm I'm omitting this back line right here. I, I don't really care about the back line there. Um, it will be it will be shown. It will be hidden, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. So really, I'm going to concern myself with this front face. This face right here is this face right there. That all right? So we know that. The curve starts 0.9 from this base, from the top of the base. So I'm going to offset 0.9. I'm going to offset that up. And that's where my curve starts, right? In fact, right at that intersection right there. And it ends right at the intersection there. We also know, because the, the circle is symmetrical, that the midpoint along this surface right here is going to be the peak of that circle. Now, 
don't don't be confused, right? You you can't go with the midpoint here, right? Why can't you do the midpoint there? Well, that includes this little part right there, this little section, right? So we we actually need to omit this little section. And what we can do is just grab the midpoint here. So I'm going to draw a line from the, and I'm going to use object snap midpoint again, from here down to, I'll actually go all the way. All right. So there we go. All right. So now I have the three points that I need. I have this intersection right here. I have this intersection right here. And I have this intersection right here. And that's all I need to draw my ellipse, right? The curve is foreshortened in this view, so it appears elliptical. So I have three points for my ellipse, and lo and behold, there is a axis end ellipse that requires three points. Now, in fact, we could also use the center ellipse, but I'm going to show you the axis end. So we go, it says specify axis endpoint of the ellipse, so I'm going to choose this point. And then the other axis endpoint is this point, and then I'm going to stretch it up right there. Okay. And now I can trim this off. And I can trim off this part right there. And in fact, I can erase that. And I can trim that. All right. So there we go. All right. And can also erase that, all right? Um, now, how do we get that the back of this? Well, that's the neat bit. Uh, once you've drawn the ellipse to get the back surface, we just need to copy that ellipse. So we use copy, select this, and I'm going to copy it from this endpoint to this endpoint, okay? And of course, I don't want to see that, so I can trim that off. And now you're starting to see, but notice how this, let me zoom in here. Notice how this bit dives down. It almost, you, you almost get the sense, your brain is kind of communicating to you that something doesn't feel quite right. And it's that this is coming back down. So what we need to do is we need to put a line across the top of these two. So I'm gonna draw, go to the line command. I'm going to use my quadrant object snap, right? Quadrant, and I'm going to draw a line from quadrant to endpoint, and then I'm going to trim that away. And there we go. Now that your brain should be telling you, oh, okay, I, I, you know, that looks about right, right? That is the um, the foreshortened view of this vertical thing. All right, so we got an ellipse right there, and we have we copied the ellipse back there, and then we topped it off with a line across the top. OK, um, you can't draw this. This is not tangent, even though it appears tangent. Technically, it's not tangent to the top uh, and you can't use tangent object snap because tangents aren't. Um, uh, AutoCAD doesn't define tangents for ellipses. OK, so so use quadrant, use quadrant, little little tip there. Um, all right. Now I need to draw this hole in here, which is a diameter of one. Um, and we're going to kind of use the same technique. I'm going to draw a, a line from here down to here to the center and just over here, um, just as reference lines. And then I'm going to go to the um, ellipse command. And, uh, you know, this time I'll use center just, just so you can see a different center. And I'm going to choose the center. Of course, this is the center. And I want to, oh, you know what I didn't do? Ha, ha, ha. I did not. Um, I did not mark out the diameter one. Okay, so I need to put the diameter one. Which direction is foreshortened? This direction, right? Which direction is not foreshortened? This direction. So I'm going to offset 0.5, right? The, the diameter is one, so 0.5 is the radius. I'm going to offset this line up 0.5. Now, could I offset this line over 0.5? No, no, you can't. It doesn't, that's not how the ellipse works. That's not how the foreshortening works. And I'll show you, right? So let's go back to center ellipse and we choose the center here and we choose one there and then we choose the other. Well, see, look at that. We go 0.5 and guess what? It's a circle, right? So that's not correct. So how, hmm, how are we gonna get that in there? Where, what is that point that we need? Ah, well, you know, 
That's why we have to go back up here and draw these hidden lines, okay? So let's add that in there. So I'm gonna draw a line, a reference line. Um, I'm gonna draw a line from, uh, let's just say the midpoint of this line to the midpoint here, okay? Now I'm gonna offset that 0.5, right? The diameter of that hole is one, so half from the center out to the edge is 0.5. There we go, 0.5, all right? And now I get to project this point down. And there we go, okay? So now you can clearly see that this distance from here, let me trim this out and trim this out. This distance from here to here is clearly not 0.5. This distance is 0.5. This distance is 0.354. You know, it, it's, it's something like the square root of, the square root of two times 0.5, um, but uh, we're not gonna get into the math. You can calculate it, but that's not what CAD is for. <laughs> All right, so let's go back to center. Um, we choose the center ellipse, boom, and then we go here and we go there, and there we go. And we can erase these construction lines. And then that's, that's peachy. Um, while we're here, uh, you know what? This should be uh, hidden. And I'll erase this because I know I'm going to add a center mark there later. Um, now, we can't forget the back edge of the circle, right? So we may see the back edge of this hole. How do we get that? Well, we copy again. Copy. I'm going to select this. What distance am I going to copy? Well, I'm going to copy. Watch this. I'm going to copy from here to here. Oh, and look at that. We do see a little bit of that back edge. So I can trim that out right there, and that's the back of the hole. Now, I have to tell you, that's usually my, um, my, my areas that I love to uh, mark wrong on drawings because a lot of people omit that, okay? So I'm kind of giving away things to those of you that are watching the, watching the, uh, the videos, you know, um, if you, if you, Watch the videos, you'll, you'll see a lot of little tricks that I give away, things that I uh, end up marking wrong most of the time, okay? All right, so um, so there we go. Now, let's, let's draw these holes in the profile view. So we're still using this dimension. In fact, let me move this down here so that we can reference it a little bit closer. There we go, okay. Um, so uh, we can, you know, we have one hole here and another hole here in profile. So let's go ahead and drop these lines down. So I'm going to drop the through hole down and we go from here to here. It goes all the way through and likewise from here to here. Okay. Now we got the counterbore, right? That's this diameter. So I'm going to drop a line from the extents there down to there. Now, Clearly, this doesn't go all the way through. That's a nonsensical hole. But the depth is right there, 0 0.04. So I'm going to offset 0 0.04. I'm going to offset this down. And then there we go. So now we can clean this up. In case you're wondering what that looks like, this is what it looks like. And then I got to get rid of that right there. All right, and there we go. All right, of course, this is all hidden. And there you go. And in fact, make it, I, I could make it a little bit, I, these dashes seem a little bit large. So I'm gonna, um, I talked about this in another video, but to change the size of the dashings, the command is LT scale or the shortcut is LTS, LTS. And then the line type scale factor right now is by default is set to one. I'm gonna try 0.5 and see what that looks like. Yeah, that's not bad, you know, okay. Um, now the great news to, you know, once you've drawn this, we just have to copy it over here. So we can go to copy. Um, I'm making a, a lot of, you're going to use copy a lot in this drawing apparently. And I'm going to select the object and how much am I going to copy it? Well, you know what? Look, I'm going to copy it from here to here. There we go. All right. Now, um, we're, we're not quite done with this, right? We do have some additional things that we need to add. Um, 
because you are drawing a complete front view and top view. Um, the top view is complete with, with the exception of the center marks, right? But the front view is not complete. It's a lot more complicated than this, all right, in terms of hidden lines. So what we have to show, we have to show this back curve. See this curve right there? It continues down like that, and then there's another back edge right here, right? And th that all is hidden, right? And then likewise, we have this hole, this back surface of the hole, and it's going to continue back here, also hidden. And then we're going to have a line across the top here, hidden, hidden, and then we have this hole right there that's going to be hidden in it. Ay, ay, ay. We have a lot of stuff to do here, right? So let me just go ahead and start doing this. Um, actually, I can get rid of this. We've used that. So, so now the, the problem with drawing these elliptical shapes with hidden lines is that we, we, you can't extend it because it has to be on a different layer, which means it has to be a different object. All right. So, um, so here, let me, let's, let's just get going. Let me copy this. I'm going to copy this from here to here, right? And uh, that's going to be hidden. Okay. Now I want to get this back curve. I want to continue that through there. Um, but I have to draw another ellipse. I have to draw another ellipse. Um, I, I can't extend this one because then it would just be on the layer that it, that it's on. So I'm going to go to, um, Axis endpoint, I'll choose one axis endpoint. I'm going to choose another axis endpoint and I'm going to stretch it up there. Okay. Um, and you can see it lies right on top of the existing one, but we only want from here down to there. So here I'm going to, and just so I can keep track of everything, right? If I keep it as a visible line, what's going to happen is I'm not going to be able to tell when I have two visible lines on each other. So here, I'm going to go ahead and change this to a, to a hidden line, just so I can see, see the different colors there. So it helps me to, to see this. And now I want to trim, and I'm going to trim it back from this top edge to this vertical edge, hidden edge right there. And I want, whoops, sorry, I did the wrong thing. Let me try that again. Trim. I want to trim um, between this line and this line, these are my cutting edges. And then I'm gonna hit, yeah, hold on. All right, sorry about that. I was picking the erase command. I, you know, somebody should have spoken up, um, but I wanted to use the trim command, trim, um, whoops, trim. So we go and I choose this as a cutting edge and that as a cutting edge, and then I hit enter. And then I'm going to pick this part of the ellipse to go away. Right. And notice that now the hidden part of the ellipse starts here and ends here, which is exactly what I wanted. OK, um, now I want to do the same thing over here with this ellipse. So uh, I'm going to draw an ellipse. Basically, I'm just going to uh, copy the ellipse or draw the same ellipse. I'm going to draw ellipse from the center out to here. And then what is my height? Eh, no, that's not going to work. Um, Hmm. The center of that there, um, well, here's what I'm going to do, right? Because I don't really, I don't want to draw construction lines like that. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to copy this again, because this is a complete one. I'm going to copy this from here to here again, right? Now, I have two ellipses right there lying over each other. However, to help me visualize, I'm going to turn one of them to a hidden line, the one that I want, right? And then now I just need to trim, and now this is a little bit tricky, all right? So I'm gonna trim again, um, uh, and I'm gonna trim using this as my cutting edge, and then I wanna trim, now notice I'm going to pick, see, I don't wanna pick the hidden or excuse me, the visible circle, the yellow circle, uh, yellow ellipse, I wanna make sure I pick the cyan uh, hidden ellipse to trim that away, okay? 
Now, if you've done everything correct, that's how it's going to look. Now, let me show you. I'm going to move this. All right. So you can see this looks like a C and it matches up perfectly with that. All right. So that's what we want. Okay. Um, and uh, no, we're not done yet. <laughs> there's, like I said, there's a lot to this. Um, we want to draw a line from quadrant to quadrant and from quadrant to quadrant. And yes, that's going to be a hidden line. So that's the top and bottom of the hole. And finally, we want to draw the vertical hole in here. Now that's not going to be that tough. We just need to project this. It's hidden. So I'm going to project this down to the, to the top there and project this down to the top there. Now, like I said, I feel like I'm giving away a lot of stuff but I suppose it's reward for watching these videos, which I think are, um, you know, it, normally in a class, I would be doing this lecture um, uh, live, right? Um, and usually what happens is uh, a lot of people don't pay attention or pay half attention and then they're lost. And when they start to draw this, uh, they realize that they weren't paying attention and they don't know what's going on. And unfortunately, when I do a live lecture, you can't rewind it. Here, uh, with these videos that are recorded, you absolutely can rewind it and play it over and over again. So that's kind of why I'm explaining things. And, uh, you know, I, and I know that you can go back through it and, and, uh, and fix all that or, or, uh, revisit it, see it again. Now, some of you um, are going to be uh, pointing out that, hey, wait a second, there should be a little ellipse right there for that hole, and there should be a little ellipse right there for that hole. And you are absolutely correct in a purely geometric sense, but in uh, engineering drawing, it is absolutely the standard that when you have a small circle intersecting with a large diameter circle or you know, whatever you want to say, cylinder, hole, whatever, you can omit that small elliptical section right there. Okay, so this is drawn correct for engineering drawings. For those of you that are curious about that, I would point you to page 103 um, and figure 635, um, intersections of uh, cylindrical features. Uh, actually, it's 102, page 102 and 103, um, cylindrical intersections. Uh, but that's okay. So, so what do we have here so far? We have the front and the top view done. All right. Minus uh, any center marks. We haven't put the center marks in there yet. They're just kind of kind of get in the way right now. So I'm not going to put those in there. Um, and uh, I believe that is the complete top and front side view, front view, okay? So now let's handle the, the auxiliary view. So what we're gonna draw is we're gonna create an auxiliary view looking at that, the face that's shown as an edge right here, right? And we're gonna be viewing it from this direction, right? So if I was to put like an arrow head, I could, you know, th this is the way we're viewing it right there. That's an arrow. There we go. We're viewing it that direction, perpendicular to this surface right there. Okay. So um, I'm a little bit dubious of the tight uh, space between this. I don't think that's uh, really appropriate. So like I thought, I'm going to move this a little bit more. Um, make sure though, when you move it, you don't move it to the side. Don't be goofy. Don't move it to the side. Make sure you move it straight down. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball it here, move it straight down and go. I think that's enough room. But again, we can move it back up later. I just want enough real estate in here. So um, so then we're only drawing a partial view of this auxiliary view uh, of this surface. So it, it should be very, um, very straightforward, very simple. Let's, fr let's frame it in first. So I'm going to use my technique that I showed in the last video with the auxiliary view, and I'm just going to use offset. And uh, when it says specify offset distance, I don't know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick it. I'm just going to go from here to, you know, I want it to go right about there, right there. 
So I pick those two points and then that becomes my offset distance. Look at that right there. And it offsets a perfect line for me to use. I can, and now this line for in, in my drawing, what I've done is this line represents this surface. So now to start the, the, the circular features here, I want to offset 0.9, right? And I can even draw a line from here. Oh, you know, I'm still on the wrong layer. Uh, let's go back to visible. And I want to draw a line from here to here. Boom, boom. And a line from here to here. And because this auxiliary view is intended to show the features on this surface in a true shape and size representation, these curves will be circular, right? So I can go to the circle command and whether it's diameter or radius, I'll, I'm on diameter, so I'll choose that. I can, whoops, no, let's go to radius. It'll be easier for me. Um, so I can go to, uh, Actually, let's 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 use let's use two point. We can use any of these, but I don't have the construction line set up. So let's use two point, and I'm going to choose one point here and one point there. There we go. All right, and now let's clean this up. We can trim that off right there. We can get rid of that one right there, and now we have a diameter of one hole that we need to get in there. So we go back to center diameter. We draw this and a diameter of one, and there we go. And look at that, that is like 99% done. The only thing we have to add is that little hole right there. So now, uh, how are you gonna draw that through there? You can't really, see quadrant, no, quadrant won't go, that's not correct. See, I'm not coming tangent. So how do we do this? Well, we, we gotta draw a line at 45 degrees, right? We know this line is at 45 degrees. We know this line is at 45, so this line is gonna be 90 degrees to that, which is 135 degrees, okay? Um, and we know the the diameter of the hole is 0.125, so we can offset, this is the center, so offset of half of 0.125 is 0 0.0625, There we go. And now I can trim that off right there and erase that. And now I have to be careful, look at this. This is another point that I love marking wrong on drawings. See how that extends through there? That's wrong and I can see that on your drawings. So we need to trim that, clean that off. Another bonus for watching these videos, right? So, um, and, and then these, this should be fine. Let's see, yeah, that's fine, regen, okay. Um, and of course, these two lines are hidden. Hidden, all right, there we go. And you know, I think that spacing is pretty good. You know, we don't want it too crowded. There's enough room for that, that, that looks good, okay. Um, and there's my partial auxiliary review, so that's done, right? Um, now let's add in the center marks, All right? So we go to center line and we go to annotate and we choose center mark. Now here's, here's a couple of tips. When you have concentric circles like this, always make sure you start with the outermost circle. See what happens? Look, if I choose the inner circle right there, I'm going to get a short center mark. And then if you go, oh, wait, uh, let me do this. Then you're going to get center marks on top of center marks and center marks on top of center marks on top of center marks. That's no good. Don't do that. Pick the outermost. Pick the outermost. Okay. Now, um, we do, we do want to combine these two center marks. All right. So let me, let me show you how we're going to do that. All right. We're going to kind of fudge this. Remember, I don't like the center mark command. All right. So there are certain fudging workarounds that I'm going to allow you to do. All right. In the absence of literally drawing the center mark, which is what we used to do, it's not a big deal and it looks a heck of a lot better. Um, we're going to just use the center mark command, but we're going to, we want to combine these two. So we have a couple of options here. You could either, you could draw a center line from here to here. All right. That's acceptable. All right. Um, or you could also grab this. Now watch. I'm going to grab the arrow side of this and I'm going to stretch it right there. Okay. 
Either one of those two methods is acceptable. Okay, either one of those two methods is acceptable. Um, now, this does create one long one and one short one here, but, you know, we're never going to see that in the drawing. Um, now, let's finish up uh, with the top view. So, we have a center line between here and here, right? And then we also have a center mark there. Now, interestingly enough, because of, well, let me, let me put it in there and then we'll talk about it. Center mark, there's a center mark right there. And look at that. Look at how that is off. Now, interestingly enough, that I've drawn this correct. I've drawn this correctly according to the dimensions. But what's happened is there's some round off error, right? Not by me, but by the dimensions on this figure in the book. There's some round off error, all right? Um, and because of that round off error, it has conspired to make the, the centering of this hole in the object not in line with with these with with the center mark um, uh, between the two holes all right we're not going to fix that all right we are going to leave that like it is all right so so that is that is the way it is okay um, now you can also see that there's a little bit of an issue here remember that that point was um, on the edge 2.2 inches from the right side and then this was 45 degrees and then 0.8 there's your problem right there okay now that that's according again by the dimensions that's what it is if if we were to fix this what i would probably do is i would take this and instead of making this 0.8 inches thick I would make it to the edge here. And then the thickness of this is not 0.8, it's, you know, some strange uh, repeating decimal, all right, that we'd have to figure out how to create from a dimensioning point of view. But we're not gonna mess with that, we're gonna leave it like that. I'm, I'll look for this, all right? So I expect to see this kind of mess of center marks and stuff in your drawing. Um, and now let's go down here. Oh, let's go here and we'll put the center mark. Now, um, here's some issues with the, the center mark command again. It always draws um, uh, north, south, east, west, right? We can't have that. That's not correct. So once you put that in there, you have to rotate it, all right? You have to use the rotate command and you have to pick this and you have to rotate it through the center of the circle and you have to rotate it precisely 45 degrees, all right? And it goes through that, which is perfect, all right? Now, um, let's, let's do this, uh, annotate. We'll do the easy ones first, center line. We'll go through from here to here, all right? Um, and uh, and we, need, we should fix this because see how that's to that point right there? It should be from there to there, okay. I know that's picky, but I I want to show you how to do it correctly. You know, whether the boss or whoever you ultimately works for cares, um, you know, I, I don't want to show you how to draw it incorrectly. Um, all right, and now this. So let's go to center mark, right? We need a center mark here, so let's go to the center mark. What kind of center marks do we need? Well, really, here's what I want you to do. You're only going to put center marks on the visible circle. So only this and this are going to get center marks. We're not going to put center marks on all the hidden features. Um, well, except for this hole right here, but on the, on the hidden ellipses. Because then it just gets too confusing. All right. So center mark, we come in here like this and, oh, look at that. Nothing happens. Well, wait, oh, so no, nothing happens. What the heck is going on? Well, another strike against the center mark command in AutoCAD is that it does not put center marks on elliptical features, right? So how do we put that in there? Well, you just got to draw it, right? You got to draw the, the center mark as a as some line. So I'm going to, I'm going to go from the center up here and I'm gonna extend it down to there and I'm gonna draw from the center out to here and I'm going to extend it 
out to there. All right. Now, um, what is the, uh, we need to extend it slightly beyond these. What is that extension? Well, if you look in your stand, your CAD standard um, on, I forget what page I said, but it was, it's right in the beginning under the center marks and center lines. Um, the extension needs to be 0 0.09 inches. All right. So I'm going to, um, I'll, I'll show you a new, a new command, even though it's not really necessary. I'll show you a new command, the lengthen command, L-E-N, lengthen. Um, so the option for lengthen that we want to use is the delta option. So I'm going to type in D-E for delta, and the delta length is 0 0.09. So I'm going to type in then that and hit enter. And then I can extend that there, extend that there, right? And extend that there and extend that there. Now, um, I'm actually going to show you another method to do that. So if you don't like lengthen and, you know, arguably it means you got to type in some stuff and remember it and all that good stuff, we can just use grip. So I'm going to click on this and watch. I'm going to stretch that out and see how it gives me that little, the, the highlighted blue uh, text. I'm just going to type in 0 0.09 and it extends at 0 0.09. So arguably that's probably way easier than using the length of command, but hey, you know what? I, I can't pass up showing you a new command. Um, now some of you will, will have um, maybe aneurysms over uh, the, the, um, the cross being up here like this and not in, don't worry about that. That's something that we really can't control um, I mean, yeah, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Uh, now this, we can act, absolutely use the center center line command right there and put that in there. All right, and that's it, okay? So that is the, uh, the completed drawing, right? Front, top, and partial auxiliary view with hidden lines and center marks. All right, so now let's prepare this for uh, for printing or turning in. So we, we wanna put this on the ANSI B. So I'm gonna double click in here, do a zoom extents, bring that in here, and then uh, let's set the scale. Um, one to one is probably going to be perfect right there. One to one, look at that. Just right exactly where we need it. I'm going to lock the viewport and I'm going to double click outside of it. And now to enter in the values here, um, we're going to go to, uh, excuse me, the application menu and drawing utilities and drawing properties and custom. And then we're just going to type in this. You've seen this before. Bales, instructor C, Bales, course, MDT 101, section three, oops. 300 drawing title this is called the shaft support drawing number this is drawing for 5.3 5.3 revision number zero sheet number this is three of four right material not applicable and checked by yours truly all right so we're going to say okay to get that um, to put in there, you have to regenerate the drawing, regen, R-E, and then there it is. And now we're ready to print. So we go up to print. Yeah, this warning is just because we're not hooked up to our network. T915 is the room where the laser jet is. So obviously we're going to get that error. Um, and I'm going to go to, I want to choose the uh, high quality print, AutoCAD PDF, high quality print. Um, Full bleed, I, I don't really think it matters. Um, you know, this this has to do with the printing to the edges. I, full bleed should be fine. Let's, let's see. Layout, yes. Always, always, always preview it. Oh, there it is. Looks perfect. Yes. And in fact, that is the answer key. So we can say OK. Um, and then I'll save this to wherever I'm going to save it. So let's say shaft support. Um, and then we hit enter and let me show you, there it is right there. All right, so it comes up on my, and, all right, and that's it. Okay, well, um, 
So that this is the second video. Um, I'll do an, at least one more video um, with uh, with the connecting bar. That might be two videos because that's a longer drawing, but um, that should help you get started. All right, I'll see you then. Bye.